Hello and welcome back, Riven Raz on the attack as the 2020 Spring Academy playoffs. And we're already into game three, just like the spring split. This series is flying by right now. A 26 minute game and a 30 minute game from TSM over 100 Thieves, right? It's a fast one. Great for TSM. Seems like this split's been going by and yeah. you just. You singing songs like 100 Thieves Academy. It's a uh, it's, <laughs> press the eject button. Somebody like I think going into game three, uh, they just need to think about the early game and only the early game. They need to be competitive so they can actually get some of the strategies or at least like what they have been learning throughout the split. Right. Actual in actuality, like they just need to start working on it because they haven't been given a chance this series. I believe we see 100 Thieves choosing blue as well. No subs coming into this game, so we're going to keep running it. Tried and true for 100 Thieves. They feel good. Come into this one that maybe it'll be some, as we said, wheelhouse champions, things that just feel comfortable as they go into the game. It, they've tried to kind of attack TSM at that one-minute mark, as we said, as TSM did in game one. It just doesn't seem like anything is working out for 100 Thieves. So where do you go to in the drawing book at that point? In the draft, I want to see something more proactive out of Zaligo. Give him the opportunity to carry. Throughout the split, his LeBlanc play, I know Silas had been banned in the previous game, but like the ability to play through Zaligo has been successful. I think he is one of the best players right now in the academy, if not the best mid laner. I would love to see the ball in his hands. The problem is he's now going into Syndra two games in a row as an Azir player. And while that's fine as the game goes on, he just hasn't had the opportunity to play the game. Yeah, it's not like you're going to wipe out Syndra unless you make a flashy play on her in that middle yeah. lane. I like what you're saying. Give him more agency, you know, put him on something that can take out that Syndra. And we'll have to see. I mean, is he is he one of the big ones to go for Zoe? The Syndra's on his list. He's, he had the Akali's back in the day, so he's got some aggro in he there. He can play anything. He can definitely put up the numbers. Yeah, he can honestly yeah. play anything. I love his LeBlanc play. Absolutely. But, uh, taking a look at this draft, nothing should change. <laughs> it's hilarious that it feels like uh, we're going to be running into the same draft because TSM's counter picks they should feel comfortable with, and 100 Thieves Academy should be happy with taking the set on first pick. Now, Senna was banned because it was still difficult for TSM's bot lane to deal with it, even with the huge lead that they got. Um, but you shouldn't be seeing set dropped at all. It should be a first pick set uh, for 100 Thieves. Just the suspense. No, don't do it. Suspense. Ah! There's the Renekatekaton locked in. I ain't a fan of that. Thieves. I mean, I guess it's going back to comfort, but Fake God is comfortable on the set. He should still be able to play it. I don't even think it's that good for Renekton in the top lane. I think. There's so much built-in sustain on set that even off of bad trades, he still wins. And he also indexes into the Blade of the Rune King build with Qmax that he yeah. could do well in. So it's unfortunate to see the pick come through. We won't be seeing set today, it seems like, it seems, or at least for this game. Syndras is going to be insta-locked by TSM. He gets through. Yeah, quick and fast. That GP has found himself on the ban list the past few games, so getting through on this. Interesting for Dokla. Now he can have even more control of that side lane. He's been playing super safe, just straight to the fundamentals of farming. Don't get ganked. And now he can participate across the map without him being there. Seems like they're going straight back to what they wanted to do in game one. Um, and TSM Academy going with the GP early, even though it's not as easy to evade these ganks as Poppy, you still have insane use of your ultimate, of course. Like if you still have the global, you can help bot lane with. The sustain that you have on your W is also really effective, so it's going to be hard for Elise to get much off of her cocoon. You still have to be able to um, have her Necton right on top of GP to layer it so the orange right. just doesn't evaporate it. So it's going to be, I think it's going to be better for Dokla to be on the GP pick here, or at least for the team. Triple Jarvan. He's the fourth, but he's in the third game as well. We'll see if uh, Spika has that same consistency here getting the flag and drafts being in the face of contracts whenever he can or on the other side of the wall so contracts can i would have liked to see a nautilus pick here from behind these academy or at least something that makes it so elise can go bottom lane as well she doesn't have to go top side of the map so uh you know brom just mm -hmm. makes it so you can probably go for a safe lane it's good for tsm to ban ezreal out going into second phase because it also works alongside it of being a safe bottom side pick 
Um, seems like 100 Thieves just want to play the top lane as much as they can, at least in this game. There's the final Lucian ban coming in from TSM with 25 seconds over to the side of 100 Thieves. And we'll see what they decide after TSM's four pick, but... I like the ban from It's gonna be a thrash. Thieves. I think the uh, Rakan ban was smart. They didn't want to give TSM another Zaya Rakan lane, so it's gonna make it so... Take away the for sure initiation besides yeah, the jump. Exactly, and it's also another safe pick as well. So, uh, Rakan and Zaya, Zaya and Rakan together just provide way too much for TSM Academy. Oh boy, well, they still, they still got the anchor toss, anchor toss and depth charge coming through from Nautilus on treat, so. Let's see how they answer. They already have a good bit to block this. You can get a scatter the week out of there with the Brahma Unbreakable. MF is still available. Not too much else. I think uh, 100 Thieves were probably just too. So the problem with going Kaisa into MF is just that MF Nautilus is just a strong lane. At least we got that Silas pick for 100 Thieves. He got it, Silas. He got it. At least he got it. Uh, that's something now you can play through. So it's not just top lane. You have a lease in Silas that can try and take down Evolved. At least that's another door that you can play through. Oh my, what? You know what's, what's funny? Up? Is I just look back at that week nine game of 100 Thieves versus TSM, and they actually played Renekton, Jarvan, Syndra. Yep. Now it's gangplank. They just did that second game, but they still have this Jarvan Syndra combination. They're loving it. It's just so safe. You can already see it from game one that Speaker wanted to play the Jarvan no matter what. In game two, he picked it when most people would pick Syndra. Uh, I mean, Sejuani. So they can have a Sejuani Renekton combo. But, like, that's just yeah. what they've done throughout the regular season, especially the last few weeks. And they're just trying to ride with comfort. They know their roles as best as they can. Uh, with these kind of picks and with this composition as a whole, the MF last pick is the easiest last pick of the world. I'm actually surprised that Kaisa Brahm came out because Kaisa Brahm is a bad lane to the to the MF. Like that's just a lot of damage early on that MF should be happy with. Mm -hmm. She also gets pretty easy items early. Like she can go double Doran's blade, triple if she wants to over-index yeah. in it, but that's something it took the lane's been pretty bad at, the, at that point. And so that means that Early Dragon should be easy for the side of TSM Academy. All right, we'll have to see. We'll be in game shortly. Quick five-minute break for that competitive integrity to keep competition at its highest. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back to the 2020 Spring Academy playoffs. We're in the quarterfinals right now and already into game three as TSM is just blowing through these games as they face off against 100 Thieves. 100 Thieves choose blue side once again and hopefully they can take the win. I gotta be honest with you, Riv. Like, as much as I love, you know, Saligo getting an active pick like the Silas. All right. I think LeBlanc would be a little better. I mean, I just, it's just a, it's a hard lane to go up against the Syndra. You do need a little bit of help, so I'm glad that you still have the least to you know, pair up with that. But I just don't want to see any more flubs in the early game from 100 Thieves to find themselves at constant deficits before any time you know, 100 Thieves even get a chance to group up. So let's have a clean, stable early game. And let's get a game four going, please. Yeah, right? See if they start to invade a little bit. It looks like a line of scrimmage for our last, I should last, for our third game, rather. Not a best of three, it's a best of five. And it does not look like anybody's going to be too much invading. Now, TSM did, did, a late, did do a late invade on that first one, but it also doesn't look like they're gathering. Look at Breezy. Oh like, my god, they really want this invade. 100 does. They're going to live and oh. die by that sword. Last time around, they lost because it was Treats who was there first. They want to force this level one, please. I, I love it. I mean, Contracts has Volatile Spider Link. So oh it's not my god. Call. Offered in the fight. Saligo over the wall. We're getting harassed. The 5v5 level one. Game three. Saligo goes down to 100 HP. And everybody considers that fight one more time as it starts to happen. They did my man Saligo dirty. How is he going to start <laughs> off in this bad matchup with like 100 HP? That's tough. That's tough. Evolved has had kind of the easy role. Really not even playing through the lane, right? He's been roaming with Spika the entire game. And then Saligo does what he can do mid. But now I think Evolved will be very happy with that matchup, as you're saying. 100 Thieves literally said that we live and die by our swords. They go back for the same play and saying, hey, last time you brought your support, we will bring Breezy as well. And <laughs> so matched it. Uh, pretty insane how that's gone off. And take a look. J4 is now gone for this one. We talked about oh. we talked about this die, this gank pattern. Get red, go bot, try bush and gank. But he did walk by a ward, I think. I'm not too certain. Um, so he just goes for his blue buff. Ooh, my word! It's so touch and go. Both of them are just at 200 HP. Fake God gets a call to meek back to heal himself up. As Dokla is working with a bit of trial by fire, you can see on his sword there. He uses it on a minion just to start farming. But yeah, we are going back and forth real quick. That, that invade for 100 Thieves as well kind of threw me off because Breezy was so far back. Braum is one of your biggest frontliners in that engage, and he wasn't even able to really get a Winter's Bite down. I just don't think it's a good level one for them. I know that they have Silas, right, right. E, and Braum, so you would think you should be confident with that, but is this tough, especially if you're going up against uh, an exhaust MF early? Um, I think that kind of tilts it in favor of uh, TSM a little That's bit. That's true. Great point. That's a good eye. It is actually exhaust coming in from a, a, a support on Breezy as well. As we see that being used a bit more. Yeah, with the buff Contract that exhaust Biden got a few patches ago, people have been really mm -hmm. enjoying it. Uh, it's been making a resurgence. There have been actually in solo queue a lot more people doing double exhaust bottom lanes, but hasn't been happening. Yeah. Having that conversation, Contract is thinking about this die, but the wave is way too thin. And, and talking about it, oh, maybe he goes back for it as we just kind of chat about exhaust. like. The, the options that people have and the scenarios they played around with exhaust as well have to almost be relearned, right? You can catch people off guard, you take them down thinking, oh, that's the sliver of health, but exhaust stops you from getting that sliver of health you think you could damage. So it's very interesting to see those play out again as it hasn't been used for quite some yeah, time. Yeah, it's especially in the first week of scrims when you like off that pack. <laughs> the amount of, I love the hesitation. The amount of exhaust <laughs> plays, like the amount of 2v2s that people have fought and then realized that they just yeah. lost because they had the enemy team had exhaust. It it just drills it into you to always check sums mm -hmm. and to respect it. So uh get a little bit of that one here. Yeah, absolutely. I love seeing those times come around again because then you get a whole different style of play once it is kind of at its max level again. As we come up here, four and a half minutes, and a little bit of love in a 5v5 as our one-minute fight went off. It stayed true to each game in this series. I'm liking it. Um, 
And 100 Thieves is looking to get a lead on this one. If they can't get ahead in the beginning of this game, it might be just detrimental as TSM has had such a lead and played with such confidence as soon as they even get Yeah, one. and they're already thinking steps ahead. You saw that bot lane base coming in from Lost and Treats for mm -hmm. Double Longsword. That's because they wanted the dragon play. Um, what? Yeah, well, I'm sorry, Breezy. Oh no, that teleport was taken by Prism. He said, it? I'm out of here. Double up. No! Oh, no, he the turret. oh, he's going to be good. Treats on the aggro. Beautifully done there to grab that as they went into the turret. Now a fight to evolve in the mid lane. Will he be able to keep this one as Soli go? There's the agency he was looking for. Flashes forward and gives him a quick chain lock. Hey man, you may have got us in game one and two, but you ain't going to get us again in game three. At least Soligo is ready to fight. He didn't start off to a good start in this game, but now has that first kill. Maybe we can see something happening here for 100 Thieves in the mid game. All right, a little bit of vision clearing is that's going to be oh, a breather. No. Everybody's reset. No, top lane back and forth. Nice barrel set up. Oh my god, Dokla gets hit with that call to me. Gets a heal up on Fake God as well. Could be the kill. Does he have Volatile Spiderling to come out of the flat? Oh, that was gross looking as he just did it. Quick succession with the fast fingers. Contracts. Gets a kill for top side. Beautiful to look at. And this is the type of fire was, yeah, you wanted to see earlier beautiful. on, man. And you're starting to see it now. Man, like we've been seeing 100 Thieves. Try to execute on these, falling short. It's not like this is the first game they're doing it. This is the first time they've been able to get the results on TSM. Speaking now has to watch topside. I mean, he's going to be happy about that. That's a lane paycheck for him. Doklo long walk back as he was quickly teleported back to lane as Fake God stole all of his health nice and early in that lane. So 100 Thieves are putting a few things in order. It's gone to Duck there. It's evolved once again. Grabbed in. Contrast. Got him. Oh, looks like he's omnipresent this game. And Breezy looking for the flash cue. I like that. The predict. We'll call it a predict as they still come up with the kill. Look, if we're going to take our, you know, uh, 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 <laughs> critical glasses on, Speak is mad this game. The fact that his lanes have oh, fallen yeah. to very easily, like, you don't have to die in these ways. Like, Contracts getting the kill on Evolve early, fine. Makes sense, right? That was a play that they had wanted to set up. You made the mistake. Burn Flash. You respect that. GP already yeah. knew Elise was topside. There was no reason to look that far in lane and, uh, you know, make that trade happen when you knew that Elise was looking for you the entire game long. Found the opportunity to get the kill on GP. And then Evolve doesn't have Flash because of the prior play, and so... There are, there is basically no reason for the last two kills to be happening, but at least 100 Thieves are starting to feel themselves. And, and really putting Saligo on a bit of a pedestal here, he had about 150 to 200 HP when he started in that lane against Evolved. Now who is 0, 2, and 0. So Saligo just holding his own this game on the Azir for the first two games, had decent lanes, but couldn't really push the fights around the way that he wanted here. On that Silas, he's been looking to get. It was banned from him in these games. Looks pretty good in that mid lane for himself. Evolve's going to go ahead and pick up blue buff here. Head back in to keep that farm fest going on the mid side of the map. 12.8 to 12.3. Still not an extravagant lead. And Cloud Drake or Rift Herald could be the first thing to tempt our junglers. So much has happened in such a short time that redrawing your footsteps is actually really important here. Where TSM had mm -hmm. set up for a dragon play really early on and had basically like for you know five steps in advance would have been able to get it but not only did lost and treats you know index into a dive bot side so they really couldn't stick around for far too long right but also the mid and top lane just collapsed at the same time um so at least he gets it but only because that was at least top side getting a proper trade and now we'll be trying to get some golden fake gods pockets yeah Big turrets could come out of this one too if they want to use it right away or for a bit of pressure later. Nice little uh, lens there on the OK orange. We're going to have pushes on both sides of that. Treats with a quick shield down as that was under turret. Aggro on the depth charge. Or I should say anchor toss as the bullet time goes flying across. And we actually are going to get this top side hit. About half a plate is going to be left unless they can get it down to two. They have a full wave. But yeah, you'll get half the plate. They should be able to get half it. a plate they should here. Be able to get the full turret now just because. Heck yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see if the dive comes off here. Wow. <laughs> Why not activate on the bottom? If you know that much is happening, TSM is going to say, we'll take our fair share. They do not have the same wave, though. They do not have the same pressure as 100 Thieves. Yeah, I was wondering if they could defend 
a three man or oh, second uh, hit but they had syndra coming in as well but this has just been a great response from 100 thieves academy early on no prismal you can't yep. you're alone but what if i and then i but what if i if that's the that's the answer right <laughs> and he does not speak is gonna be able to take him down so Ligo says i got an ultimate depth charge on oh nice stopwatch they do get that pivotal play out of treats as he keeps himself alive and that's kind of big for the initiator there wanting to get in and be able to play the stopwatch trickery a lot of sums used in saligo a little omnipresent on the map himself contracts having a much better game on this elise as the team goes back to it you know you spoke a little bit about the first games of being able to kind of point to draft point to this and that and they're kind of mixing and matching parts of their drafts now that did feel good yeah and i'm a little disappointed because if you have okay. moments where contracts is firing off, Saligo is having those moments, or even earlier on in this split when Prismal and Breezy mm. were doing the exact same, right? On the opposite side of the map, you have to give them room to breathe. You have to recognize that this game, like, you don't need... You can, you know, concede your side of the map completely, right? You can play smart right. recognizing that you're getting something much larger on the opposite side of the map, but 100 Thieves made a pretty damn good play off top side. And then down bot side, we're very disrespectful of J4 having control of their side of the map. So you just don't want that to happen because this is when uh, 100 Thieves Academy are getting their second, you know, second win. Like they're starting to feel right. good. Contract is having a phenomenal early game, but it's still being traded to TSM. These traded goals shouldn't be happening. Good point. Working now on this dark vision. You can see the pink ward just to the right here for TSM. So Ligo does not bite very smartly so it stays in mid lane protected as the junglers walk by each other quickly i believe they saw each other it seemed about a uh, round to at least see the raptors being taken and now speaker will slowly kite in between contracts here they now go cat and mouse and contracts is going to be bought for what could be a bit of pressure from treats and loss but they won't get too close even with the kills going into the pockets of saligo remember that this is still a bad matchup for him that Syndra can always mm -hmm. just push out the lane and then rotate towards the squad. So 100 Thieves still always have to fear for the invade in their red side jungle for a possible dive here. So even with the lead there for Renekton, it still doesn't feel quite as good. I would say the best solution yeah. to that for it would be a skirmish. It looks like they're looking for something here bot lane. Semi reading it. We only have speaker there, so yeah, no push in from Lost and Treats. 100 Thieves, a slight lead here as the map goes back to open up. Everybody's going to get some pretty reset waves here, except for topside. Fake God still pushing in just a little bit. And the reigning champs are kind of on the brink here with a little bit of a roster change, obviously, in that top side and around, but looking at possible defeat here against TSM in the quarterfinals. It's going to be tough, uh, especially with how you know, synced up TSM Academy R as a squad. Mm -hmm. um, that they always can get the max of a trade. That being said, Dokla still has to watch out. He's always being tested here, which is fun to watch a weak yeah. side player. Um, but now that he's, you know, put behind, that he has a wave underneath his second turret, he can farm a little bit more safely. And as you saw earlier when he was bot lane helping out his team get vision, he can be a little bit more flexible to help the team as well. He doesn't have to stay on right. the offside of the map knowing that he doesn't have vision in his own red side jungle. You see the cannon barrages come out. I haven't really seen too much of a 5v5 fight other than our level one at one minute. And just kind of going over how 100 Ds and TSM have both uh, one weeks throughout the season looking at 100 d's it was the three games from week one to week two they were able to string together and then it was very one and one each week never really be able to find your stride in those situations to be able to pressure bot and for tsm from week seven to the first week uh a day of week nine they had that win streak synergizing finding ways to come strong into the playoffs and get that mark for themselves so there's definitely something to be said about that win streak tsm has had here at the end of the spring split that it seems like they have found something else to work with. Yeah, a, a few teams have really found their stride at the end of the split, which says a lot about, um, you know, that grit, I would say, from a lot of these teams. Mm -hmm. They still have that level of, you know, confidence at the end. But take a look at this. This is tough for 100. There's that Braum pick. MF came after that, so Breezy knew he'd be able to block some. But just being pressured out, 100 Thieves is losing a bit of the ground that was created here early game. And that's what you, that's what you're saying, right? It's not always... Uh, 
one side of the map that needs to be strong. It's each side of the map working together. And TSM has seemed to be able to dismantle this bot side once they felt behind. Three to three now as it starts Ooh. to get more evened up. Evolved getting a bit of love in the mid lane. Unleash power available for both as they're gonna rip it out. And it's gonna be stronger from Saligo with the help of Fake God coming That was now. the window that we wanted to see, but it looks like Prismal has to watch out. That was close. Flash blown there as more ultimates finally seeing Douglas Cannon Barrage come out and affect the rest of the map as he can be omnipresent while in top lane and just giving Fake God hell. Fake God gets the push, he's up in CS. But Fake God's gonna have to join these fights if he's gonna be the big one. He has good things Saligo's big, good things contracts is yeah, big. Yeah, I love this from you know 100 Thieves Academy side because they're they're playing to their windows. You know, Renekton, mm -hmm. the reason why they got the Infernal Dragon was because Renekton had pushed top and had joined the team just in case there's a fight. Like he recognized that he needs to be a part of the play. And going in for that mid lane dive, even with the flash available from Evolve, they knew they had the members to do it. That's why it's important for Prizzle and Breezy to keep safe. If the play doesn't involve you, all you have to know is concede the wave if, uh, you know, Senior Jungle can dive you. And if he can't, then just pick it up underneath your turret. There's no reason for Prismal to be losing his heal on the and that cataclysm coming through from Spika. Or at least no, it was it was actually yeah. the, the you know Dokla Gangplank ulti. Uh, just play safe. You don't have to take that side of the map, or at least like that path I mean. We just saw the damage coming in from Lost on that double up. Prismal went down to half HP. He's still working that health back. Treats knows they are a bit ahead of the game. They don't even have vision really past their ward in mid there. Their what I call shoulder sides are just blue vision for 100 thieves so you can see how confident treats is feeling being nautilus walking up sourcing stuff with just the vision he can create on his champion pink ward now gonna get cleared out as 100 thieves is looking to protect mid bot lane's getting a bit of love here as they might be able to find dokla in a sad spot maybe gonna take a little bit of damage or at least get pushed away from the yeah. turret uh i didn't actually That's get bad. to mention this in game one when we saw the Renekton Elise mm -hmm. and Azir game, I didn't like that because they didn't have the opportunity to play on side lanes. That they had to play towards team fights with the Azir that they had. This game with Silas, you can play a 1-3-1 pretty easily. And it forces TSM now to uh, really index in trading whenever possible. And they should be losing these trades. So it's good from TS, uh, 100 Thieves Academy early that they're able to free up Renekton, get that bottom lane outer turret, and are now looking for the mid lane outer. And double Herald control this game as well from 100 Thieves. Fantastic job. Kind of putting those steps before them, before they executed. We talked about how their composition's coming through. We're going to work really great on the spot and just take you by storm here. Oh, no. As they set things up, it starts to work, but TSM has figured them out. And the dominoes may start to fall. Breezy can go down right after Prismal falls. And the repel won't be long for Contracts as he gets right into the waiting arms of Evolve. A nice flash out, but all for naught as he is shut down and that gold goes to Evolve. Big pickups all around. That's the risk of running a 1-3-1 is that if you stay a little bit too late in your window mid lane, you just get collapsed on and die. Great play from mm -hmm. TSM to just look for it. Lost three members, 100 Thieves Academy did. And a lot of the advantage that they accrued. They had a gold lead for quite a while in this game. Just lost it with that play. It's like, what, I was saying, wait, what? Doklas here too? His teleport is up? It just seems like they had a so, such good positioning for that. An unfortunate thing for 100 Thieves. So Ligo trying to stop some backs so they can get a little bit more time to work on the map without seeing TSM just across the river from them. Ward there allows him to farm safe. Here's the thing, Rick. It looks like they're... Because with these compositions, I know a lot of people don't get to see 1-3-1 um, one, one comps really operate. Not just in Academy, but also in LCS as well. Because it is difficult to play around. You have to have a lot of respect on mid lane, you know, priority from the enemy team. Mm -hmm. like, all you have to do is look towards your side lane. You can see 100 Thieves are back on the map and are pressuring again. Renekton's got GP down bot. Syndra would ordinarily be forced to play towards the top lane wave as well. And then you have at most a 5v3 advantage for 100 Thieves on Windows. Like that's why it's so good. Yeah. Um, good timing now. So good, it's almost a crime. Exactly. Um, and no one can apprehend 100 Thieves. They're already right now stealing this dragon. So that's the problem that TSM, <laughs> even with the goal lead that they got in the last play, will still have to hold, have to deal with. This is looking good. Could be Ocean Soul that they're able to pick up for themselves here. 100 Thieves on their way to more, and they'll be able to have that. 
to see how they continue to execute. TSM getting a little ground as they start to work the outer turrets and push 100 Thieves back into their own jungle. I love 100 Thieves' vision as it starts to creep up towards that bottom side where they need to be protected. And TSM is still playing around theirs, but it's back on that defensive. So we'll see if they push it forward and start to encroach onto the side of 100 Thieves. And it was a interesting decision that uh, that TSM made. I said the way I set up the 1-3-1 mm. point was that ordinarily Syndra would have to answer top lane. I'll leave that for later. Doko's getting hit. Big damage. TSM tries to flank on this one. They do have the teleport from their team and they're going to be safe to at least fight. But will the fight be safe? Fake God's low. He actually gets the Skirmisher's smite. And he's going to be walking out of this one because he can't deliver too much back to speak at the time. 100 Thieves get themselves a turret. They're going to be able to walk out with every member. Teleport did have to come through there so they could get themselves out safely. But all things considered, they are feeling good. Yeah, it was getting a little dicey there. Was just... The game's so close in gold. Yeah, it was getting a little tough. It was getting a little tough. But at least they were able to, you know, push back on that one. And Silas was be able mm -hmm. to, you know, provide at least some cover for Fake God, who is should have died honestly at the in, in that play what is the next move it looked about tsm moving their vision up they do have six wards to their name that they could be pushing forward to the five on the side of 100 deep so both teams keeping that resource available to make sure these fights go in their favor and they have the vision necessary you have to you have to wonder he talked about the one three one and how kind of timid 100 Thieves is now knowing if they separate against the Nautilus and Jarvan, how fast the Nautilus and Jarvan will be on their back line. Yeah, and so I think you just have to be respectful. As I say that, contracts and Saligos might get caught here. I think we're okay. Ooh, quick ward, yep. Yeah, we're fine now. Um, and teleports are coming up soon for Saligo. It'll take some time. Uh, maybe actually a little too long. That's why they have to play to his side of the map. Uh, but the point being is just wait. Just be calm. You know, Renekton is getting an advantage bot side, and he will be able to rotate and help you guys get mid-covered. In fact, he already has an angle now, so TSM, I think this play from TSM is illegal. It's gonna be a little tough. <laughs> oh, Spika is taking quite a bit of damage, but now they've pinched off Contracts and Saligo. This could actually be bad. The teleport's coming in for TSM. Contracts, beautiful stopwatch. Unleash power, not really use that well. Saligo and Doko going 1v1 as Prismo comes over the wall. Will he be able to get the killer instinct down? And no, he dies in the middle of the fight. Breezy now chased out of this, and TSM are able to turn the tables 22 minutes in on 100 D. There must have been some confusion from 100 D's Academy side. That was yeah. a good angle for Fake God to join the fight. He didn't even have to TP. He can just cut through the blue side jungle, but he didn't. And it actually made it awkward for the two who were trying to come up on a flank to the left side. TSM takes the fight. They got themselves a Baron for it. It's tough for that dive in, right? It's like Breezy's kind of left out to dry. Hey, all of you can jump in, but I can't W to any of you at that distance. So we saw Breezy not being able to protect too much. And like you said, a little bit of miscommunication on how that one would execute. TSM's fight prowess again comes out on top for them there in a 5-0 and 2 lost. Now on this misfortune is almost three items deep. It's tragic. That's the type of fight that the team will look back on and will, you know, beat each other up over for. That the viewers will mm -hmm. probably have the wrong read of because it looks so scattered. The team looks so bad off of what was honestly probably just a very honest communication error. Renekton sure. could, should have just come through the blue side jungle and they were ready for the fight. But maybe he just wanted to push her, the GP under inner turret. So that was just not yeah. the team not being aligned in a very crucial part of the game. For sure. TSM, it's like they're accepting the 1v1s that TSM is kind of giving them, right? And always you have to respect if somebody teleports in front of your face. But if you're fake guy, you, you can slice and dice back into the fight. Things much easier said than done. And I'm also not their level of play. So 24 minutes into this one, eight to four. And we'll see what kind of lead TSM's working with here. Just 2K, but like we said, when TSM has a lead, they make it look like it's 10. You know, they keep pushing. They're going to let you know they feel they're more powerful and stand right in front of you while they take your turret. Saligo has the Cataclysm out to try a fight as Dokla getting the run around in the jungle as Fake God takes top side. Yeah, Dokla's trying to be close enough to the play while still getting farmed because he's not going underneath that turret top lane unless he wants to get killed. Um, and even Elise was there, so... 
I mean, 100 Thieves Academy are trying to find anything. Like, literally anything so they can get Renekton ahead. Doesn't have TP here, so the fact that he was top lane there just means that they were conceding that inner turret. So, right now at this stage of the game, it looking pretty easy from TSM Academy. Muramana Rage. Rage just finished. Feels good for Prismal. He can start getting himself into these fights with a bit more pow. And looking, it's just kind of a breezy what he's trying to offer. They're still on that kind of garage sale build, as Captain Flowers would say. Not having your items yet, but still trying to stat up and build your way to it. To the Gargoyle Stone Plate of Treats, who can kind of walk in, suss out a situation, and the team can leave if they don't want it. That's not even mentioning the engage tools TSM continues to use. As 100 Thieves, again, they don't have that for sure initiation in this composition unless they're stealing an ultimate. Yeah, and if you're just taking a look at, um, you know, the items coming through from TSM, it's getting worse and worse. Mm -hmm. In fact, the Sterox Gauge wasn't even a purchase from Dokla here on the GP. He's just going straight towards some crit. Um, so he wants to join the team. He's already confident in the front line that Treats and Spica offers. And so it's more of a question on what does 100 Thieves Academy do? Like, you can already see their answer. They're just trying to have Renekton split push his mind out topside. And then you yep. can rotate over. But if they're ever in an even number footing, TSM Academy just wins. Evolved. Slightly alone in this situation, but... 100 Thieves doesn't have enough vision to know that. Contracts may still, still try to activate. The Cocoon just misses. And uh, TSM really on the edge of getting a big fight there to put against them. It's just all that vision. They're so safe to walk around. And how 100 Thieves is going to try to push mid. I like the way they're trying to play this kind of TSM's base side. Get there first, make TSM react. And if you're cutting the minion waves, that means TSM can't take turrets. Yeah, I mean, it's actually pretty fun just watching... 100 Thieves Academy's response to all of that because mm -hmm. it was just Renekton across the map booking it over to see if they overstay bot lane or at least give them the inside track on mid lane but it's always being answered to um, it's not bad what 100, uh, 100 Thieves is doing I feel like it's really the only option they have because TSM is just playing through mid lane they're just sitting there there's nothing you can do as long as they're grouped up it does become quite scary because you also know if they're if even if one's missing that ultimate is still going to be with the group so you you can't fight them expecting it to be a 5v4 at all 100 thieves looking to clear out vision now to make sure it's at least a, a 3v3 or 5 i should say 5v3 or something less than the fight tsm wants volatile spiders to check just about everything as they do not want to go dry into these brushes get themselves taken out Two to two in Drake's as we have two minutes left on the ocean. A little bit of love for top side of the map is going to come through now as we have one minute on the Baron. It'll be a good time to get the vision up here. 100 Thieves still very confidently moving forward, knowing this is a much closer game than the previous ones, and it's great to see that they still have this left in the conference. Yeah, it's just annoying for TSM Academy to deal with it, and it's good. Like, we're finally seeing consistent, you know, coordinated mm -hmm. play from 100 Thieves to make it so... TSM always has to respond to someone on side lane. So now that Syndro is up top, they can get top side vision. Now that GP will show bot lane on two huge waves, by the way. It's easy for Renekton to come and join, but Breezy's getting caught out. But it could be on to as well. Evolve Contracts is going to repel back in. Spica does not get the kill. That's going to be Treats picking it up onto Breezy. Evolve keeps himself safe. Lost is able to fire away, but now Fake God, he's just fighting too much alone inside the red pit. Spica with a great flash over the wall to keep himself alive to flag and drag back into the fight. They're just an, a, such a mobile team. 100 Thieves is having so much trouble getting on them. You just misstep once, and it's over. Like, Braum walks in too early before Renekton had any angle on mid lane to give you confidence. And they lose Braum before the fight even begins. So it's tough, man. And TSM is the team that just punishes you for it. Oh. Realizing my excitement, I said TSM was a mobile team. Spica is mobile, and the rest of the team used Flash as well. <laughs> but all of that just looked like they continued to have gap closers or ways to shift out of a situation. Tough for 100 Thieves to be able to calculate all of those and come out with the right play. Again, Breezy getting caught out as it became the vision. Finally, our fight started over what was a ward and escalated into that. 
now 12 to 4 in favor of TSM. And that gold lead oh. starting to build. TSM now looking for another fight as they know 100 Thieves wants the ward. I like that from Tree. Stepped it so he wouldn't hit the wall, but Breezy with the finer step to get himself out safely. 100 Thieves should just give up this dragon. I know it's going to be their third and that they're going to be at soul point, but no reason to contest their vision when you know TSM and Cannibal will be on the map. Treats is in position for another hook. Oh, looks like he taxied that one to a minion, but he's still going to want it. Winter's Bite goes down onto him, but nobody's going to be able to lock down Treats. Still, he go to the middle. Double Cataclysm towards the backside, but you saw him pushing himself into the fight, not using other abilities to get there. He wanted one thing, and that means your focus might be Tunnel. Fake God's going to be the one going down here, and TSM still able to see the bigger picture in these fights. Yeah, they got the pick on it evolved. At least 100 Thieves Academy is being competitive, but Lost is mm -hmm. untouched. 8-0-5, finished up his Bloodthirster before even that fight began. He's huge, and this should be the game, honestly. Yeah, with these timers coming up, Fake God's 32. That means if you push through harder, it looks like they'll give a little bit of breathing room here. Yeah, maybe. Oh, no. Dok Dokla's, Dokla's waiting. Dokla's coming. Look. Maybe he thinks someone could be behind them. His cannon barrage is down, but maybe setting up barrels. A lot of maybes. Woulda, shoulda, couldas. And it looks like they're only going for one inhibitor on that one. But their pressure on the map is in every lane I'm now. calling it early, because at least for that one. I thought it would be oh, uh, TSM snap. being confident enough to go in on that play. Fake God was gone. Mm -hmm. Lost to that full HP for that one. I think they could have ended it, but at the end of the day, playing a lot more safer. They know that they still have... Yeah, this whole point. Dokla mentality is like a, a team thing, right? The way he's been playing, it, it, it's everybody's on that. And so, it's getting pretty crazy right now. Uh, the fact that I was looking towards the build of Prismal to see if he would get to Nasher's 2 first before, uh, you know, Lost could mm. be at Godsend level, but that's not even the case. Yeah. Even can throw a Quicksilver Sash in there if he does get locked up by something now. So having that surplus of items to make your opponents have even a tougher fight. Ward's cleared up the mid lane. The train's going to be coming down the track soon. It looks like Doklu will bring up the caboose on that bot lane. We'll have to see what 100 Thieves now can put up as a defense in the base. I think a, a fight more out in the open does kind of favor uh, 100 Thieves here, so you can see where the members are. TSM really benefited in that red Brambleback fight as the flashes over the wall, lack of vision. We'll see what happens, though. Remember that 100 Thieves don't have flash on any of their members. Um, it's going to be tough for them if they get hooked to really find a way out of it. So it's just going to be eyes on uh, Treats, who's been missing a few hooks to the later portions of the game. Just close this one home. Got a ping on the top side turret. Looks like they might want to swap the way they're doing this for now. Two and a half minutes on any of your objectives on the map. So basically objective free, as I like to say. You, you work your waves, you get the vision out. And this is honestly a big time for 100 Thieves to be able to just sit within this lull and discuss what they need to yeah, do. Yeah, good timing. Just remember, Renekton had to catch that bottom lane wave. Had no idea where the GP would be going as he catches mid lane. So they just get a free top lane inner turret throughout the entire rotation. So, um, it's just TSM trying to play this one out as clean. They know that 100 Thieves is a scrappy team, yeah. but they want to find a play on top of them so they don't give them a chance. Very methodical in the way they're working this. It, it reminds me of the uh, TSM main team too back in the day where they'd have a game, but they'd go through each inhibitor, even if they had a way to win already. Then the, they obviously both Nexus turrets and just make sure all of the base was gone. Leave nothing on your plate. As you clean it. TSM Academy now, is really forcing this one mid. to be a, a soul dragon game, aren't they? This hurts. Hurts for 100. They gotta try to get something. Maybe they can try a pick on the speaker. Yep. Oh, thank you. Contracts has to flash out in order to repel if he was gonna try. Just on the coattails of Breezy flies the dredge line from Treats, and that was. A possible fight going down. Double scatter the week back onto 100 Thieves. They're working with a lot less health at this point. And Cataclysm, that would have been a big one if he could have hit Saligo and Contracts after blowing that five minute flash. 34 minutes on the clock, Raz. I feel like TSM is kind of just playing with their food a little bit. Yeah, they have Dragon coming up in 45 seconds. So if it doesn't end off this team fight that Saligo has been positioning for, TSM is going to pick up a Dragon that has to be uncontested by 100. Yeah. It's the question though, can the food bite back? Is it still alive? We will see. There's an there's a cataclysm. Onto Saligo. 
I like to see Sligo and Fake God with the same objective, the same target as they go into this fight. But they could get pushed away immediately. So many things him. to stop them from actually hitting what they need. That's the flag and drag in. Here comes Fake God Sligo. A big hit on the backside and Cannon Barrage gets dropped on the flankers as they try to come through. Still going in with that Cataclysm. Sligo's gonna do what he can do. His Prismal's now in with Killer Instinct trying to deliver out the damage, but it looks like they are just chipping away at brick walls. TSM gathering around each other as Breezy still just on the edge trying to throw snowballs into this fight. And there go the health bars of 100 Thieves. Fake God now running out of this fight and Raz, I think that's all they wrote. Right when you think you got an angle, takes lost out of the fight, Crip Plank hits you. And now 100 That's Thieves huge. are being packed home. This is tough to watch if you're a 100 Thieves fan. The reigning champs going up against TSM Academy here in the quarterfinals. And 100 Thieves will find themselves defeated in a 3-0 as TSM will be moving on to face Dignitas in their next semi-final. All right, it's a little bit of fight. They ain't going out without a fight. They ain't going out without a fight. They got heart. That's good. I'm gonna do the call again anyways. They're gonna be going out of contract. Oh! Speaker, he lives. Wait the a minute. Him. Wait a minute. The end him spawned. We're alive, boys and girls. We're through this one. But through thick and thin, and it looks like 100 Thieves is going to be able to keep themselves alive on this one. Nobody's going to the semifinals just yet. Killer Instinct comes in. Scott of the Week back as well onto Prismal. How are they staying alive? They're going to start up the Drake. They're going to try to stop him from getting soul and get him soul to self. And can they do it? Treats a little bit left. Depth Charge coming out to take him down. It's going to be a few more Chain Lashes coming in from Saligo to capitalize on that one. The Drake is picked up, so Ocean Soul is already flowing through TSM. And the chaos that is almost the end of this series. Hundreds got heart, man. They ain't letting this one Let's end go. without a fighting chance. Prismo is taking his shots. Lost had to be sent back at home. Had to come the long way from base. They didn't have their AD carry to end. And they knew that in Heb was spawning, they got time and they made Woo. TSM pay for it. All right, you're still working against the 7,000 gold lead. Longest game of the series so far with a 27 minute game, a 30 minute game, and now we've just crested over 35 minutes. 37 minutes, if we want to be exact. We got the clock. And it's five for Elder. Go so get him. a lot of patience needs to be here. One scatter. That's going to be a 3v100. Thieves coming up with a kill that gives them more room on the map. Will they be able to find the rest of TSM? These are the 1v1s or the, the 1v advantage numbers that 100 Thieves needed to be picking up earlier. And it looks like TSM is getting a little overzealous enough to put themselves in those positions. Riv, these are some long death timers. If you mm -hmm. get killed one more time, that's a Baron. That's uh, with a 131 comp too. This is actually an opportunity for 100 Thieves to rob TSM. Yeah, you have to remember look at the map. They did so much work before. 100 Thieves is well in position to make this a one and done fight and Nexus game. Good warden going over the pit. Looks like 100 Thieves is going to attempt it. TSM starts to approach. Nobody from the flank. It is going to be the cannon barrage from Doakliff. They know this is going to be down, but he has to watch. For that damage he's providing for that. Okay. Throws it on it. Baron goes in. It's going to be Speakers. The bullet time rips across 100 Thieves. And this is could be the one that empties their pockets completely. Lost picks up a kill for himself right there. Treats is now on to Saligo. Could be the blast going to save himself. And 100 Thieves is going to try to stop some pushing in. Look at that base. also get back themselves. Here's Dokla and Evolved. They're inside the base. And they're letting the super minion do most of the work as they add the final touches on to the Nexus to move themselves on to the quarterfinals. At least they fought back. They didn't make it a clean 3-0. 100 Thieves wanted the world to know that they were flinging fists. But man, yep. TSM Academy, after this series, if you're Dignitas, if you're Cloud9, you're uh, sweating bullets. You're afraid about these teams Abs now. Absolutely. I think TSM is just one of those. The, the teams, while well, you've seen a few just of the comps that they're showing and they can play well, those are two still terrifying comps. That Tarek and then running a few other things. Like, TSM, I feel like, is coming into playoffs super strong. They have their, their, their stuff together, and they're ready, to, they're ready to pick up some more wins. I think they're going to give Dignitas a pretty big... Yeah, when I was looking at the bracket as a whole, I actually thought that TSM had one of the better chances to take it all. I think TSM and Cloud9 look like the cleanest teams. Which is so surprising saying that because like weeks ago I would have said Dignitas hands down. Um, 
but they're still kind of recovering and working as a team to kind of fit Greg into the system. And also just, I think a lot of teams have also just caught up, flatly said. Even if Acadian was on the, was, uh, you know, sitting tight with the team in Academy, like everyone got this shit together. Everybody like rallied yeah. and got stronger. You can already see how TSM was able to perform today. It's tough for any of these teams to be confident in that matchup. Yeah, yeah. So looking at who they could play, we obviously have Evil Geniuses and Team Liquid tomorrow, and then chosen first round winner or remaining first and remaining first round winner. So, looking at these, how are you feeling about Evil Geniuses and Team Liquid tomorrow? It's an interesting one, just because Evil Geniuses for me is the wild card, because they were the one okay. that got Gyu, their new mid laner, at the end of the split. Right? I don't even know who their mid laner is going to be for the playoffs time, because they mm -hmm. decided that Five Fire was not playing near the end. So I think that makes them far weaker, that they have to kind of start from what seems like step one, while TL got that out of the way really early on once they were able to finally use Shurnfire. And I think Shurnfire is a spectacular jungle talent that you know Team Liquid is starting to rally behind. And I, uh, one thing about Yu, I remember his first game was on the Renekton and that the team was actually able to win, but he had a tough lane. He was kind of focused, as I think any she team should focus, that new guy coming in towards the end of the season to give him a hard time. Yeah. But the mental he had, he stayed in the game. Their team won the game, and he was a focus the entire early game and still provided at the end. So seeing that from him, definite plus, and I, I have big hopes for him in that mid lane coming in. So it's super cool to see that they're actually able to make that pickup. But you're right, it still doesn't make everything sync in the synergy that the team had before. So it could be tough. It'll be tough. I think Team, team Liquid has gotten better. They did have a pretty weak final week. Um, mm -hmm. And they just squeezed into playoff. I'm still I'm still salty, Riv. Like, <laughs> head to head. I hear you. Get those wins, man. You have to. But Team Liquid found their way through the door. And I think uh, they still have some strong talent in Yasui. I already talked about Shurnfire. Like, playing through mid-jungle should be a given for them. And that's also just the weakness that... Uh, for me, the way the way I'd see EG, like you should play against mid jungle if you want to be able to beat EG, and I think Team Liquid has an edge there. Absolutely. So, PSM Academy taking the win today over Hundred Thieves Academy. Raz, thank you so much. I hope you had a blast, man. Hey, man, I did. Thanks for having me. Heck yeah! I'm glad you could get up here and do this with me. I had such a good time as we got to shout it out together for the 2020 Spring Academy playoffs. Everybody at home, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you still making time to come and check out the LCS and Academy broadcasts as we try to set them up for you. Are always taking your feedback and iterating to make it much better for you. Again, Raz, thank you so much, and thank you to everybody on the online broadcast queue crew that made this happen. I hope you all have a great night, and be sure to tune in tomorrow for that Evil Geniuses versus Team Liquid match.